Coming up in this episode, we're making a quick and easy home project that will make mealtimes more special. Welcome to The Sewing Report. I'm Jen and this channel is all about making sewing and crafts fun and approachable for everyone. We are continuing the Learn to Sew series with another simple project that incorporates sewing and a little bit of quilting. You can never go wrong with placemats. Not only are they a quick sew, but you can choose any fabric you want. These are reversible and they make fantastic gifts. And if you found your way here but you don't know the first thing about sewing, not a problem. I'd also recommend you check out my Sewing Machine Basics videos featuring the Brother CS7000i. That is the machine I'll be using for this tutorial. Let's meet our fabrics. It made sense to buy an entire bolt of this cotton duck canvas in the color blush. It matches really well with the printed canvas. I'm totally living for Cotton and Steel Rifle Paper Co. English Garden and Navy. Both are from fabric.com. I was a little iffy on pre-washing canvas because I had a pretty nightmarish experience with another project. The canvas got super wrinkly and it was really hard to press out. Instead, I decided to try this. Not sure how effective it'll be, but I gave it a chance. I sprayed the canvas with a moderate amount of water, then went over it with the Cricut Easy Press 2. For each placemat, you'll need pieces measuring 14 and a half inches tall by 20 inches wide. One solid, one print, and cotton batting. Place the fabric right sides together. Then lay the batting on top. Don't worry, it will end up in the middle. Flip over to the canvas solid side and we're going to round the corners. You can use any round object, like a cup or a glass. Trace around the outside with a marking pen. Cut off the corner with scissors on the marked line. Pin the three layers together on all of the edges like this. These are my favorite magic pins. One thing about this project, I had to increase tension on my sewing machine to about 7.5 to 8. Test out a scrap piece first. With a half inch seam allowance, sew all around the perimeter of the sandwich, but leave about a six inch opening in the middle of one of the long sides for turning later. Backstitch at the beginning and end so your stitches don't pop out. Go slowly around the curved corners. You'll have to keep shifting direction slightly. For this part, I used 50 weight cotton thread and a 2.5 stitch length. To prep the piece, I like to press out the section with the opening. Clip notches on the curved corners, or you can use pinking shears like I did. Carefully turn the placemat right side out. Press out the corners with your fingers. You also want to press out the straight edges as close to the seam as possible for a sharper line. Pre-pressing that opening makes it much easier to position and line up with the rest of that side. You can glue baste the opening shut with Elmer's washable school glue in a fine tip bottle. These are available in the Sewing Report Etsy shop along with other supplies used in this video. You'll soon be sewing the opening closed by top stitching. Because of the bulk at the seam allowance, I ended up increasing the tension to just under 8 to get even stitches. Top stitch with about a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around with a 3.5 stitch length. To emphasize the quilting on the placemats, I chose Aurifil 12 weight thread and a 100 over 16 needle. Lock the stitches by overlapping a couple inches when you get back to the beginning. For added detail, I top stitched a second line about a half inch inside the first line. Because you're only quilting through three layers now, you'll probably want to lower the tension again to about 7.5. Keep in mind I'm demonstrating this on the Brother CS7000i. 
Obviously, you'll need to test out your own settings if you're on a different sewing machine. You could leave your placemat as is and consider it finished, but I felt like it needed a little more detailed quilting. I've had this 4 inch creative grid square roller for a while and used it to create my design. By folding the placemat in half both ways, I found an approximate center point and placed the roller on it diagonally, then traced on the edges with an air soluble marking pen. Then I took the square and overlapped it on either side for sort of a diamond argyle-ish look. And you can actually quilt the design all in one continuous line. Here's the path I figured out to accomplish this. At the sewing machine, I did start stitching about an inch before the starting point to overlap and lock the stitches. Quilt directly on the marked lines. I once again chose a 3.5 stitch length. Start to finish, quilting the diamonds took about 7 minutes. You can either wait for the pen marks to dissipate or wet them with water and they'll disappear when the placemat dries. Now let's talk about care instructions. If you're using 100% cotton canvas, you can probably get away with laundering on a short gentle cycle or hand washing with cold water only. Now my bolt of solid canvas did say dry clean only, but because it's cotton I feel pretty comfortable with this method and we gotta talk about drying. You probably want to avoid putting your placemats in the dryer for a long period of time because you want to avoid shrinkage. So what I usually do when I'm cleaning items like this is I will either air dry the item completely, I might press if it's a little bit wrinkly, or you can probably put it in the dryer for about five minutes or less on low just to release some of the wrinkles and then let it air dry from there. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, it would really help me out if you hit that like button. And I would love for you to join the Sewing Report community by subscribing to this channel because I've got lots of other beginner-friendly sewing and crafting videos. For the Sewing Report, I'm Jen, and remember, whatever you're doing, make it fun.